Jacques Blom, get out of here, kid. You're making the rest of us look bad. That is a star in the ascendance. ascendance. Keep it up, man. Well, speaking of stars in the ascendance, finally, we have seen our African teams coming to the party in AFCON after a pretty lackluster weekend. The goals have started to pour in. David Noctwane, assistant coach to the under-23 national squad, and of course, the top dog at Santos is back in studio to offer us his perspective on AFCONs. We're gonna leave the weekend behind us because we didn't see a goal and it was a little bit frustrating, but the week has kicked off and the tournament has kicked off. How are you today, first of all? How was your weekend? I'm great, uh, Graham. Thanks for the invitation again. Great to be on the show and uh, morning to the viewers at home. Well, we had a fantastic reaction after the breakdown you gave us going into AFCON. So we're gonna, gonna get your expert opinion on some of the games and some of those front runners in the tournament. So I'm gonna start with the first of the goal fests. Um, Ghana took on Congo, two very strong sides. Both well balanced, a two-all draw. I think both teams would be happy to take a point out. No, certainly. You know, we, we know what Ghana is made of. You know, very strong uh, a team, powerhouse of Africa. Certainly favourites. The Air Congo came in. You know, sneaked in a draw uh, at the end. So, uh, you know, generally we've seen a pattern of draws, even with goals. You know, because as coaches, you go in cautiously. Yes, you want to go win the first game. Worst case scenario, you want a point because then you can balance the equation from there. Did you think that had an effect on SA Cape Verde's game? It looked like Cape Verde were playing a very defensive game. They weren't going for the win at all. And that sucked a lot of the excitement out, certainly from a Bafana perspective. It looked like we were just trying to create opportunities the whole time, but there were no real gaps, no counter-scoring opportunities. Yeah, certainly. You know, uh, if you look at the general outlook of the tournament, you'll see that the stronger teams perceived, by the way, uh, tend to be more offensive in their approach. And the so-called minus or average teams, uh, according to our perception, tend to sit back from a tactical approach of the game. And inside the game, you know, coaches will try to figure out on the day, is this team really coming at, at us or are they there for the, for the taking? And we certainly saw that with Bafana against It's like Kepede. boxing, you know, it's like certainly. you know, testing your reach, seeing, seeing what your opponent is capable yeah. of. And we saw Mali up against Niger. Mali sending an early message, they got the goal. Um, one of those minnow sides, but again, a, a dark horse in any tournament, you can't count them out. Certainly, Mali is a great, Mali is a great team. You know, West African teams have been dominant in this tournament in terms of their play, you know. So uh, Mali also will be interesting. I always uh, fancy them, you know, they're always up there. Semi-finals, quarter-finals, so very, very interesting tournament, certainly, I think. Sadu Keita plays for Barcelona. You can't keep the champion players out of the score sheets, um, and that was highlighted, I think, in probably the game of the tournament so far because it involved undoubtedly my tournament favourites, the Ivory Coast. They were up against their old rivals, Togo, who also on paper, not a bad side. And we saw the stars come to the fore. Jovino, we knew he was going to make his mark in this tournament and he chose to do it early on. Yeah, you know what, uh, Graham? That's what makes every tournament exciting. You know, uh, when your ch champagne players, as you put them, uh, rise to the occasion, you know, it really lights up the tournament. So, and we've seen Jovino, we've seen uh, Didier Drogba, you know, uh, Yaya Torre, you know, uh, so, yeah, Keita, and we can go on and on, you know, so this tournament is starting to light up and we're really looking forward to exciting times going ahead. I'm glad you mentioned Didier Drogba, the fact that, you know, he is that kind of player that you can leave. I remember him playing for Chelsea in that similar position where literally the entire Chelsea team was behind their own back quarter. You can leave Didier out there and you always have a scoring opportunity. He is a, a one-man team in himself. Yeah, Didi is something special, you know, even at his age, you can see what his quality is about, you know, so he's worth all the money that uh, Abramovich paid at Chelsea <laughs> and certainly Ivory Coast, remember, he still wants to win this tournament. So, you know, he wants to also bow out of uh, international football on a high note and certainly Ivory Coast are on the right track, in my opinion. Yep, and they've got a point to prove after going down to Zambia and, of course, their one chance at, at becoming the champions of Africa. Of course, all eyes are on Bafana today. We're going to get into that match lineup a little bit later um, this morning at about quarter to eight. You can get all of the permutations. A couple of changes coming into the Bafana squad. We know that Shibangu is out. A couple of names coming in that I think you'll be very interested in. We'd love to get your thoughts on Bafana's progression so far and what their chances are of taking the AFCON 2013 title. David will join us for that. Do not want to move a muscle this morning. Our Wednesday has only just begun.